Matrix multiplication. The idea of matrix multiplication is a stroke of genius. It transformed not only linear algebra, but all of applied mathematics and beyond. So in subsequent videos, we'll define matrix multiplication and talk about its many applications. But in this video, I'd like to give you an idea of why matrix multiplication is such a great thing. There are three reasons. First and foremost, it brings the world of algebra with all of its amazing ideas to the subject of linear algebra. Now you've already seen quite a bit of algebra in our study of linear algebra. Yes, we've talked a lot of geometry, but when we wrote expressions on the board, they were largely algebraic expressions. And that almost justifies the use of the word algebra in linear algebra, but not quite yet. Until you see matrix multiplication, you ain't seen nothing yet. What you're about to see will completely transform the way you see linear algebra. Let's for a moment imagine a world without algebra and without the modern algebraic notation. Let me read to you an excerpt from a 7th century Hindu mathematician in which he describes the algebraic formula. Now remember that the Hindus were the original inventors of algebra. The word algebra itself is an Arabic word, and that's because the Europeans learned algebra from the great Arabic writers, but the Hindus were the original inventors, and they were the first to conceive of it as a subject separate from geometry. But they didn't have our modern notation, so they had to resort to words to express their algebraic ideas. So here is how this formula sounded back then. To the absolute number multiplied by 4 times the square at the square of the middle term, the square root of the same, less the middle term, being divided by twice the square is the value. Now that, of course, is a literal translation of an archaic text, so it sounds pretty funny. But if we analyze it carefully, we'll see that the whole formula is indeed there. And the question is, well, what's better, a formula or words, even if they were modernized words? And I think today it would be hard to argue that words are better. We're, I think most people would, of course, argue that the equation is better. And it's not only that we can write it compactly. It's a lot more than that. It's all the ideas that come with this way of writing. When we see an algebraic expression, we immediately get so many possible ideas of what to do with that expression. We can square it, multiply it by a number. If there's an equality, we can add the same number to both sides or multiply both sides of an equality by a number or expand something as an infinite series since the invention of calculus and so forth. We're full of ideas. We look at an expression and we, re and we realize we can go in this direction or in that direction or in an altogether different direction. It's great to be full of ideas. It's great to try different approaches with the same problem. And algebra gives us all of that. It's certainly much better than being stuck. Although we're not even talking about being stuck. We're talking about being full of ideas. So that's the main advantage of matrix multiplication in linear algebra. It gives us all of these algebraic ideas of what to do. Here is the primary example. Right now we'll look at this and we see a linear system of equations or a decomposition problem. But what we don't see is a product of anything. We just see one matrix being written next to another matrix. They're just compatible neighbors, but we haven't yet defined this as some kind of operation. Well, in a moment, we will. In a moment, we'll call this the matrix A. It's a capital letter. All fat matrices will get capital letters. And this column, uh, a column vector, a column matrix, would be called X. And of course, now we're double using the letter X, because X is here as one of the variables, and now we're using it to denote the entire vector of unknowns or the entire matrix of unknowns. So if this bothers you, it shouldn't bother you because depending on the context, you'll be able to tell what X means. But if it really bothers you, you should probably rename this X into something else. Maybe start with the letter Y. Doesn't really matter. Equals, and once again, a lowercase letter because this is just a single column, uh, B. And we will write this system as AX equals B. And AX will not be merely notation. 
will introduce a new operation where the elements that are being operated on are matrices and the result is a different matrix and we'll interpret this as a matrix product and we will think of it as matrix A times an unknown matrix equals a known matrix B. So this will be matrix multiplication. The result will be another matrix that equals the matrix B. And what's the advantage of thinking, it, of thinking about it in this way? Well, there are many. I will talk about the advantage of compactness next. But for now, I want to talk about the advantage of getting ideas. And the idea that you would get from this is you would look at this and say, this looks like something else I know that uses multiplication. It looks like that very simple one by one problem, AX equals B. And when we write down AX equals B, we immediately know how to solve it. If A is not zero, X equals B over A. Divide both sides by A and that will isolate X and there you have your solution. So if you think of this as being similar to this in algebraic spirit, well then you should be able to get X by dividing both sides by A. And that's exactly what will work. It turns out to be a fantastic idea. And it's a fantastic idea that was given to us by algebra. In fact, we will think of it as dividing both sides by A. And more importantly, when we write code, we'll be able to write very compact code in which we'll say that X equals B over A, or more precisely, A inverse B. So matrix multiplication will in many ways work like regular multiplication. And there will be many ways in which it's not like regular multiplication. But there are so many ways in which it is like regular multiplication that the term multiplication and the using of the word times, A times X, AX, is fully justified. So that's the first and main advantage of matrix multiplication in linear algebra. And that's the bringing of the wealth of algebraic ideas to the subject of linear algebra. Reason number two, the language. The language that matrix multiplication gives us is very effective and extraordinarily compact. You will notice that the actions that we've been taking in linear algebra have been logical and algorithmic in nature. And those are actually wonderful things when you are able to reason logically and to organize your ideas into systematic algorithms, you can do a lot. That's a very powerful combination. But there is an even more powerful tool, and that, of course, is algebra. Let me describe it this way. I think there are three kinds of ideas in mathematics, or maybe three stages of development of ideas. And I would say that the most important ideas are the kinds of ideas that we cannot even express in words. We carry those ideas within ourselves, we let them ferment and then simmer, and then they come out in words, they mature to the point that we're able to express them in words. And that, and that is the second level of development where we now have ideas that can be expressed in words and we can combine those ideas logically and build algorithms out of them and accomplish even more with those ideas. But I think that the highest plateau that a subject can reach is when its ideas are mature enough that they can be expressed by algebraic expressions. That is probably the highest plateau or a very high plateau that a subject in applied mathematics can reach. And all the subjects in applied mathematics aspire to that plateau. And linear algebra certainly reaches that plateau with matrix multiplication and the associated matrix algebra. Some people even believe that matrix algebra is linear algebra and equate matrix algebra with linear algebra. And that's certainly an idea that has a right to exist. But if one is doing it to the exclusion of the geometric ideas, then one is clearly overdoing it and giving up much of the power of linear algebra that comes from its geometric inspiration. Now let me talk a little bit about the compactness of this language. And it is indeed extraordinarily compact. Just think about how much complexity is absorbed into a very short expression. And if this was a much larger matrix, 
and a much larger system, it would still be expressed by this beautiful and compact equation. That's a tremendous advantage. It encourages people to tackle more and more complex problems, a problem that would have taken lots of pages to describe in words, and maybe a fewer number of pages if we described it with matrices, like this, explicitly written out. It might take only a few lines to be described with expressions such as this one. And any problem that we would have given up on and retreated in the face of algebraic difficulty or the sheer bulkness difficulty can now be tackled because we have a very short way of expressing them on paper. Words are fine in conversations, but it's really the formulas that survive. And it's the formulas with their algebraic ideas that invite us to move forward by trying different things. And the shorter the expression, the more effective it is and the more inviting it is to work with. And from that point of view, the language of matrix multiplication is certainly wonderful. Now, there are many different languages in modern mathematics, and each one, of course, comes with its own set of pros and cons. And with respect to some of the languages, there may be a debate whether the pros outweigh the cons. Now, there's really no such debate with respect to matrix algebra. Yes, it has its own set of pros and cons. And yes, for some of the problems, or maybe many of the problems, it's not the ideal language. However, it is the ideal language for such a wide category of problems that it's absolutely here to stay. And it's here to stay because of its effectiveness, because of its compactness, and because of its beauty. And that brings us to the third reason why matrix multiplication is such a wonderful thing. And that reason is really specific to linear algebra. Reason number three, versatility. This reason is extremely important and very easy to explain. Just about every important concept of linear algebra can be expressed in the language of matrices. We have so far seen it with decomposition. We will next study linear transformations and a little bit later on, inner products, the two other fundamental ideas in linear algebra, and each one of them will find a perfect expression in the language of matrix algebra. So the language of matrix algebra is effective, compact, beautiful, and covers just about all of linear algebra, which perhaps increases our temptation to equate linear algebra with matrix algebra. We will certainly not go that far, but on the other hand, we will absolutely use the matrix notation and matrix algebra to its greatest utility.